Live from Ball State University, news for the campus community and all of Delaware County. This is Newslink Indiana. Good evening and welcome to Newslink Indiana. I'm Courtney Dow Valley Jones. And I'm Pat Boylan. Thanks for joining us this evening. With election five days away, Barack Obama and Mitt Romney are making their final push to sway voters in key states. The Obama camp was in Green Bay today trying to lock down Wisconsin. Governor Romney, on the other hand, was in the battle state ground of Virginia. Be putting more folks back to work right now, fixing roads and bridges, expanding broadband to rural neighborhoods, making sure our schools are state of the art. Let's put Americans back to work. We don't need the Secretary of Business to understand business. We need a president who understands business, and I do. Indiana has two more major elections to look forward to on Tuesday. Re Republican Richard Murdoch faces Democrat Joe Donnelly for the Senate seat. Current polls show Murdoch with a five percentage point lead in the race. In the race to replace Mitch Daniels as governor, Republican Mike Pence faces Democrat John Gregg. The latest polls show Pence with a 13 percentage point lead. The polls close at 6 p.m. on Election Day, Tuesday, November 6th. The polls show President Barack Obama and Governor Romney in a dead heat as Election Day approaches. As a result, television campaign ads have been increasing in frequency. Tim Fogarty has a story. With five days left in the election, you're going to be sitting at home watching television and you're going to see a lot of political hate ads. We met up with a couple of college students to see what they really take from these ads. I don't really think the political ads um, do very much. Um, the debates are honestly more what I would pay attention to because the ads are just very um, negative and honestly if you just listen to the ads by themselves, every candidate is wrong. Um, I think it's a waste of my time. Every time I'm sitting and watching television, I'll be watching like Grey's Anatomy and I'll see five or six commercials uh, just bashing everybody and I feel like there should be more time spent talking about the issues than actually bashing one another on what they aren't doing. I like to do my own research and I, don't know, I listen to more of the debates and whatnot to get my information and they lie in those anyway, so why would, why would you listen to an ad? According to the Center for Responsive Politics, this federal election cycle will spend a record $6 billion. In Muncie, Timmy Fogarty, Newslink, Indiana. The election is Tuesday, with polls closing at 6 p.m. in Indiana. Life is far from normal in nine states trying to recover after Superstorm Sandy. Many forms of transportation in New Jersey are still shut down, but New York City is slowly getting back to normal. Parts of the subway system open today. However, Mayor Michael Bloomberg said that 500,000 people are still without power, most of them in lower Manhattan. He said it's going to take time to restore utilities in the city. Then there are some who are clearly going to be in buildings where getting them back in, getting electricity in the elevators going and other services is much more problematic and we're going to have to find some long-term or longer-term solutions to this. About 4.8 million people are without power in the states that Sandy affected. Courtney, uh, still cold today, but at least we got to see the sunshine. I know. I woke up this morning and saw the sun, sun shining, and I, I was excited. Natalie has more with weather. That's right, guys. You know, after Hurricane Sandy, we had some rainy weather, but, you know, right now it's looking like things are going to clear up. Right now we're at 48 degrees, but it feels like 44 degrees, so it's getting a little bit chillier. Our dew point is at 27, and our pressure is at 29. Now, as we're looking at the radar, you can see the remnants of ha Hurricane Sandy just in the East Coast and parts of Michigan and Ohio. So it's starting to break up now, and, it, and it's given us some nice weather over here in Indiana. So coming up, we're going to see if the sunshine will stay, and also we're going to take a look at our weekend forecast and how cold will it get now that it's November. Back to you guys. It's the first day of November, and daylight savings is just around the corner. For some, this can be the beginning of a seasonal depression. Lauren Patchen is live in Muncie with the story. People with seasonal affective disorder dread this type of winter, but professionals say prescription medication is just one way to avoid the winter blues. Seasonal affective disorder, periods of depression, typically in fall or winter, 
The symptoms, constant sleeping, daytime fatigue, carbohydrate craving, anxiety, weight gain, and loss of interest in regular activities. I would say everybody kind of gets a little moody, like whenever it's rainy or snowy, just like whenever it's kind of bleak outside, it affects all of our moods, like some more than others, obviously, but like I definitely see like some sort of change in everybody, myself included, so. One of the resources that we have at the Counseling Center to deal with depression in general and certainly seasonal affective disorder is we have a relaxation room, so we have a massage chair. Along with that, we also have a light therapy box. The light therapy box, also called a happy light, is proven effective to treat seasonal affective disorder. The light therapy box has temperatures from 3,000 to 6,500 degrees Kelvin. It can be used daily for 30 minutes, and it should be held about 9 inches from your face. This resets the melatonin and sleep-wake cycle. Other treatment methods include relaxation, medication, and counseling. If you are a community member, there are treatment options for you as well. You would probably seek out um, a psychologist in private practice. There's also the counseling psychology department on the sixth floor of Teachers College. Six percent of people have seasonal affective disorder nationwide. Twenty percent have symptoms but don't meet medical criteria. There are more cases in the Midwest because of the weather here. Average age onset is 23 years old. If you think you suffer from seasonal affective disorder, you may want to try one of the prescriptions or one of the alternative methods of treatment. Live in Muncie, Lauren Patchen, Newslink, Indiana. Many people go untreated because it's expected to feel more sluggish in the winter. If your mood starts to interfere with your normal activities, you may want to speak with a professional. With the Halloween festivities ending, it is now time to get the kids out of the candy eating habit. Phoenicia Brown has more. A 3.5 mile family fun run and walk race was held last Saturday to help kids learn how to stay fit during the Halloween season by exercising with their families and eating healthy. Don Crummett, the event coordinator at the Children's Museum, encourages children to stay active by exercising. We want the kids to get up and get outside. It's, it, even though it's cool outside, it's a nice crisp morning. Walking is something families can do together and make it fun as far as going out and looking for you know, a scavenger hunt outside or I see, or even um, look, have a list of you know, things to find out there. CJ O'Hara, who won first place, was excited to participate in the race with his mom, family, and community members. It's a good thing for childhood obesity too, and it keeps kids fit, and it's also very well for families to get together and run. Shannon Regal helped motivate O'Hare during the race. He actually was a student at my school last year, and the three of us that were running, we all are from his community out in Yorktown, and he wanted to run with us, and so we were really trying to push him to keep going, and we knew he could make it, so it was kind of neat to see him do that. With this being the first year of having this event, Parents are hoping the Children's Museum will continue with this healthy tradition. In Muncie, Benicia Brown, Newslink, Indiana. Thank you, Benicia. Hopefully children will continue to stay active and eating healthy for Halloween next year. Find out how some people didn't have to leave Muncie today to travel the world. And Ball State strives uh, to be accessible to students who are disabled. Find out what other schools around Indiana aren't so disability friendly. Ball State's third annual Amazing Taste is back this year and better than before. Students and Muncie residents can sample food, songs, and dances from countries from all over the world. Ball State student Chris Moore explains his first time experiencing the Amazing Taste. Um, I remember being outside two years ago between uh, Park Hall and Woodworth and Doherty, kind of in that area. Um, that, that big lawn patch was out there. There were camels and a lot of food, and it was very interesting. I kind of was an observer. I didn't taste any food then. Um, I just kind of took it all in and thought, oh, it's pretty cool. Wish I could have went, but you know. Um, and then last year as a sophomore, it was held in the student center, the facility we're in right now. Um, and I, I went and um, tasted the food, experienced different cultures, learned a lot about different cultures, and met different people, networked a lot. While some students enjoyed meeting new faces, others described their favorite cultural dishes. My favorite dish is made out, out of plantains. It's fried plantains with beans, and we eat it with red oil. That's my favorite. But we have other ones too that I really like. They're made, made out of maize. The Amazing Taste offers more than just a pile of delicious international food. 
but gives insight for students as to what cultures and what types of new things they can learn about their people. With live musical performances, dancers, resource fairs, and made-to-order cuisine, this multifaceted event leaves your senses tingling. In Muncie, Brianna Davis, Newslink, India. Students can learn more about the cultures represented on campus by visiting bsu.edu slash multicultural center. Now it's time for a look at Friday's headlines from tonight from our partners at the Ball State Daily News. I'm Erica Mihalik. In the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, new figures have been drawn in estimating the damage. Find out how this superstorm is going down in history. One of Indiana U.S. Senators will be coming to Muncie tomorrow. Find out who will be in town. And as the leaves gather from this season, students are taking part in leaf breaking. Find out how students are volunteering their time. All that and more coming up in tomorrow's Ball State Daily News. Find it online at bsudailynews.com. Back to you, Pat. Ball State is home to over 600 students who have some sort of physical or mental disability. While other schools have done what is required, Ball State University goes further and is one of the most disabled-friendly campuses in the state of Indiana. Oh, perfect. Thanks. A button like this, the one that you see beside me, is located on every building on campus. I spoke with Disabled Student Development Director Larry Markle about other services that his office provides. And I also it's the responsibility of our office to work with students, faculty, and staff to provide accommodations and services for students with disabilities. We have about 625 students who've disclosed a disability to us and use some type of service from our office. Is there a note-taking service, which is very vital for me passing my classes. And I also use their, uh, their test accommodations. That way I can do tests. I know of some colleagues that, that have my job at other institutions that, that they've been told, you know, don't promote what you're doing relative to disability because we don't necessarily want that many more students with disabilities on campus because it, in some cases, costs extra money to, to serve students with disabilities. I find that approach very unfortunate, and I'm very pleased that the, the administration at Ball State doesn't take that approach, that they see disability and students with disabilities as a very positive thing on campus, a very important part of diversity here. Uh, it kind of makes me a little angry because it's not everyone should be accepting of handicapped students and we should have the right to go to whatever school they want and not be not be able to go where we want because crosswalks aren't cut or they don't have shuttles to drive us around or test accommodations to help students. I contacted a colleague at an institution in Indiana and she said, oh Larry, I'd love to come, but my university doesn't want me going to things like that, promoting what we're doing because you know, the, there could be some additional cost involved if we get too big of a population of students with disabilities. If you would like more information about the services offered by the Disabled Student Development Office, you can visit them here at the L.A. Peninsula Student Center. Live in Muncie, I'm Dustin Gilmer, NewsLink, Indiana. You can also contact the Dis Disabled Student Office by calling 765-285-5293. Find out, if, find out if our unseasonable weather will be changing anytime soon. The forecast is next. And how oh, you can save money when buying new winter clothes. But at least for me, as long as the sun's shining, we're good. Yes, we are. All right, let's, have, let's take it over to Natalie, who's got the full forecast. Yeah, you know, guys, it was really nice that it was sunny today after we had, you know, that the rain for two days from Hurricane Sandy. But now we're going to take a look at the full forecast. So, you know, out on the West Coast, it's, uh, it's a little bit warmer, but we're going to take a look at what's going on right now in Indiana. As we zoom in here, 48 degrees in Muncie and about 49 degrees in Cincinnati. Uh, Indianapolis is about the same as Muncie, and Terre Haute's a little bit warmer at 51. And right now, it's 47 degrees, but it feels like 44, so you might want to bring a uh, coat and turn up the heaters tonight because it's going to get a little bit cold. And our dew point is at 28 degrees and our pressure is at 29. 
As we look at our high temps today, we actually got up to 50 degrees, which is nice after those cold days. And Indianapolis got up to 54 degrees, and Bloomington had a high of 55 degrees. And taking a look at the wet radar again, you can see the remnants of Hurricane Sandy up here, still on the East Coast, still giving them a little bit of rain, but obviously not as much as before. And as you can see here in Indiana and other parts of the Midwest, it's looking really nice, just a few clouds, but otherwise it's pretty clear out there. And tonight is going to be a little bit foggy, but um, not too bad. Um, it's going to be a low of 32, so again, you might want to turn up your heaters, turn on your space heaters, get a lot of blankets tonight because it's going to get really cold. And tomorrow it's going to be, we're going to have some more fog, and also it's going to be sunny later in the day. Um, just a few clouds, and we're going to get up to uh, 46 degrees by 5 p.m. And taking a look at our seven-day forecast, as you can see, uh, we're going to get up to 52. Uh, the high 40s is going to be about our average this time. And um, so it's going to be still be sunny, and it's still, we might have some late rain on Saturday. And going into our seven-day forecast, we're going to see some uh, possible rain. Um, and, but it's going to be sunny this Friday, which is nice, uh, you know, to have some nice weather on Friday, going outside for the weekend. But it looks like uh, it's gonna, we're going to have some rain. Um, so pull out those umbrellas, pull out those ponchos for Saturday, but tomorrow's going to be nice. I actually right? just lost my umbrellas. So looks like i got to reinvest. Yeah, you might want to get a new one. It's going to rain again. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Natalie. Well, coming up in sports, we'll tell you what sets Ball State's offensive line apart from others across the country. Stay tuned. Welcome to Indiana, our News Link Indiana Sports. I'm Joe Rourke. Delta moves on to the third round of the state tournament by beating Greenfield Central 28-3 last Friday. This Friday, they face an opponent they are familiar with. Delta will hit the road to play Mount Vernon in the third round of the state football tournament. These two teams played each other earlier in the season with Mount Vernon coming away with the win, 35-0. For the seniors on this team's Delta team, they're committed to playing hard for each other. Um, I remember playing flag football with a couple of them, metro football. It's just been, I don't know, I just, I love these guys and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to play with any other guys in, in the world. They're, they're my best friends and I can't, I'll leave it on the field with them. I just, Take on Lagote and in Class A action, Wapahani versus Providence a little later at 11. And Yorktown will take on Indianapolis Bishop Chatard at 3 o'clock. All right, Ball State football is rushed for the 29th most yards per game in D1 football. A big reason the Hog Mollies put up in front of them creating holes. This proves why experience is key. Ball State football is said to have the most experienced offensive line in football. Offensive tackles Cam Lowry and Austin Holtz see this as a solid advantage over their competition. I think it's a lot of advantage because you know, we have a certain comfort zone with each other. And we've been playing against each other for a long time. So in my case, I know what Hansel's going to do. He knows what I'm going to do. It's just, we got that you know, good chemistry with each other. So it just makes everything easier. Cohesiveness. We've all been working together for a long time. Um, we're all good friends, been around each other for a while. So, you know, just knowing what they're going to do next, you know, maybe having a, in your mind, knowing something that they're going to do that maybe, you know, a first year guy won't necessarily know. How will next year's team do after this line graduates? Lowry and Holtz hope to prepare the young players by leading by example. I don't know, just try to teach them by you know, like what we do. Nothing in particular, just hopefully they're watching and learning and just take little bits from each of us to try to be a better player. I'll just try to be a good role model, you know, give them someone to look up to. Hopefully, you know, we'll be a positive role model for them and, uh, you know, give them a work ethic and just help them with their technique, their hands, whatever they need. Just be there for them. Um, Ball State will take on Mac West lead in Toledo Tuesday at the Glass Bowl in Toledo. Kickoff is at 8 p.m. on ESPN2 and Sportslink Radio 91.3 WCRD FM. All right, thank you, Joe. We'll tell you what Ball State students can teach you on how to save money on a new wardrobe. And we'll give you one last look at the weather, weather for this weekend. Don't go away. Welcome to Newslink Entertainment. I'm Aaliyah Blackburn. As the seasons change and we look for new additions to our wardrobe, the prices can be quite expensive. 
Some Ball State students have already began shopping for ways to look stylish without breaking their bank accounts. College students are finding new ways to save money while they shop. Students are turning to thrift stores to supply their wardrobe. For Ball State student Sol Perez, it's more than just about saving money. Thrifting is all about originality. Unlike like when you go to a thrift store, you find things that are different, and most of them are one of a kind. I feel like they have more attitude, and they have like there's like history behind it, and then jump in there and add like your part to it. I think that's really cool. Kyle Williams, a junior fashion merchandising major, has made his own garments as well as adding an extra flair to thrift store items he has purchased. Well, here's one of my favorite blazers that I thrifted from Goodwill here in Muncie. I actually found it in the women's section. It's a women's blazer. What I did was I added some silver little frolicky, swirly things to it just to add some motion. So I just wanted to have like that Michael Jackson marching band influence and give this little, give it like a little bit more spark. Perez has also added her own style to her thrift store finds and even shoes. As you shop for your fall fashions this season, Williams suggests his favorite thrift store in the Muncie area. The Goodwill here is pretty good too. Um, it has a lot of different types of things and I even go into the women's department sometimes just to look at their sweaters and their jackets because they have a lot of oversized stuff that can fit on a man's body. We go from Muncie to London as the Amy Winehouse Foundation reports two of the late singer's dresses to be stolen from her former London home. Winehouse's wedding dress from her 2006 marriage and a cocktail dress from a British TV appearance were discovered missing during an inventory check. The dresses were going to be auctioned off for the charity, which was created to help young people overcome addiction. And that's all for your Newslink Entertainment. Back to you guys. Natalie, I know Halloween yesterday, but a lot of students probably still want to celebrate throughout the weekend. Are they going to stay dry? We're going to need another umbrella. Well, you know, tomorrow is going to be a nice day. It's going to be 52 degrees, and it's going to be a sunny. But Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be a, a little wet. Um, it's, it's, you're going to want to bring your umbrellas. So definitely bring your umbrellas if you're going out on the weekend. I will. <laughs> well, that's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to watch Monday night at 9 p.m right here on Cardinal Vision. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a good night.